Okay, uh, this video is going to focus on this unit between the Coconino Sandstone, the buff colored unit along the skyline, and the Redwall Limestone, the steep uh, kind of pinkish big cliff forming unit down here in the gully. So in between the two, the main unit we have is kind of this series of, it's almost like repetitive. It's like little slopes and cliffs and slopes and cliffs, kind of on and on and on. Um, it's about, oh boy, what, how thick is this? It's maybe like six, 700 feet thick. And this is a unit in the Grand Canyon called the Supai Group. And the Supai Group consists of several different rock types. That's why it's a group and not a formation. A formation typically has one or maybe a couple of uh, distinctive rock types. And a group is actually a collection of formations. And I think there's, I believe there's four formations in the Supai Group. Um, but it's really just a, a potpourri of different rock types. There's sandstone and limestone and shale uh, and mudstone um, from many different depositional environments. And we'll start with sort of the, the regional context of the Supai group, and then we'll kind of look at it in a little bit more detail and a little bit more nitty gritty. So I've got a couple of nice little maps here to kind of show you what was going on at the time. So the Supai group was deposited in the Pennsylvanian about 300 or so million years ago. And at that time, um, the Southern hemisphere continents uh, what we call Gondwana land, Africa, South America, India, Australia, Antarctica, were starting to collide with North America and parts of Asia and Europe. This this forms, this will form in the Permian a couple million years later, um, and that'll form the big supercontinent Pangaea. But the big the big picture here is we had. Uh, a series of mountain range or big mountain range right here along the equator as this collision is starting this impending collision is starting to develop um, but the bigger part of the story is this vast ice sheet over the south pole at that time there was no land masses at the north pole and so there was no place for the ice to be anchored to to grow uh, glaciers there but we had large continental uh, pieces of continents over the south pole and so we had expansive ice sheets and these ice sheets kind of came and went um one thing that controls glacial periods is this something called the milankovitch cycles it's basically how much the earth is tilted on its axis combined with um the shape of the orbit around the sun that the earth makes it goes from slightly circular to slightly more elliptical or oval uh and then the other thing is um the kind of wobble that the Earth has on its axis over time. And these all follow cycles of you know, tens to hundreds of thousands of years, but it's been shown that they, they have some influence on the climate of the planet. And so during periods of uh, sea level rise, um, this part of North America would get flooded by the ocean to deposit limestones, or maybe it was a coastal setting where there was a lot of mud kind of offshore deposits of mud that would be deposited. Uh, but then when sea level would drop as the glaciers grew, so as the glaciers grow, sea level drops, as the glaciers melt, sea level rises. So as the glaciers uh, dropped, then it would become more of a, a, a windswept coastal plain with sand dune deposits, maybe rivers and streams coming in as well. Um, this is a, a little, little more close view of uh, the Pennsylvanian sort of in North America. So the Grand Canyon region would be about here. And this is just one static uh, image derived from the geologic data we have at this point in time. But the main thing are these uplifted mountains here. So as these southern hemisphere continents started to collide with North America, some of the stress got transmitted into the western U.S. and it uplifted a set of mountains over here in what is now uh, Colorado in northern New Mexico called the Ancestral Rockies. These are much older than the modern Rockies, um, but these would have formed at about this time with this continent colliding. And so sediment being carried off of the Ancestral Rockies was feeding into some of these rivers and streams here that are part of the, the Supai group. So that's kind of the view of that period of time. And so um, right behind me here, you can see a couple of the different units. So we've got a cross bedded sandstone from sand dune deposition, uh, and then a really sharp contact here. Uh, and some of this mudstone, this kind of mottled mudstone, probably from a period of time when sea level 
was rising and some of these offshore muds were being deposited then um either looks like this is probably a limestone um when sea level was rising again and then kind of back into the same uh unit there so pretty unique unit the supai group this repetitive sequence of ledges and cliffs just below the coconino sandstone uh, and above the red wall limestone in the grand canyon